please join me in welcoming Jeff Tozio. Thank you, Taya and Joe. That was, uh, that was really beautiful. Energy fascinates me because both in a personal and a practical sense, it powers the planet. Electricity in particular spurred the growth of the modern era. It literally lights up our world. But sadly, fossil fuels still dominate world energy production. They create environmental pollution, high maintenance and infrastructure costs, and because of the ownership, we're at the mercy of suppliers. But what about the bigger picture? More energy falls on the Earth in one hour than the human race requires for a whole year. If we could just harness 0.01% of that energy, we would never need dirty fuels again. Now, the argument against renewables is that they don't have the capacity, it's too high a cost, and it doesn't supply the base load that we require. Well, I say to that, there's a new paradigm. This is a solar thermal plant that's just been released in um, California. It's 392 megawatts, which we've just commissioned last month. For cost, well, solar panels have reduced in price 90% in the last 10 years. Now, this is the demand on the New South Wales electrical grid for a 24-hour period, summer and winter, as you can see the peaks and troughs. Now, base load is a term to describe the minimum amount of power required to meet those needs. The problem is that renewables don't produce power when the sun isn't shining and when the wind isn't blowing. So storage is key. The only, the only thing is everybody gets caught up on storage. They think it's too expensive. But when you look at the technologies that are trying to break into this lucrative market right now, there are heaps of them. There's supercapacitors and batteries with chemistry like lithium ion and zinc bromide, sodium sulfur. There's so many. Um, one that I would recommend looking into, there's a TED talk by Donald Sadaways on liquid metal batteries. Now, over the next 20 years, the pundits say that most of our energy is going to come from coal, oil, natural gas, and a bit of nuclear. And I ask why? Coal did spur the Industrial Revolution, but that's where it belongs, in our past. When you look at the total costs environmentally and the health concerns, coal is not cheap. We're paying way too little for it. Now, oil... Oh, there's the coal slide. I forgot that one. Now, oil is like a drug for our society. This is the oil slick from space in the, uh, the BP oil spill three years ago. In the space of three months, 780 billion litres contaminated the ocean. And BP came along and sprayed toxic dispersants on the slick to try and force it under the surface. Out of sight, out of mind, I guess. It's like a bad Hollywood film, isn't it? But this is environmental damage on a huge scale. <sighs> All of the low-hanging fruit for natural gas reserves has been tapped, so the next big thing is coal seam gas. And this is a really hot topic, and rightly so. I'd strongly recommend looking at a film called Gasland 1 and Part 2. They won lots of awards. It's about in America and the, the gas industry over there. What they do is they drill these holes down hundreds of metres, and they line the inside of it with a thin concrete sleeve. This this is quite fragile, and 5% of those actually fail immediately. So the gas can migrate up to different rock strata. Statistically, after 30 years, 50% of those wells will have failed. So contamination on a broad scale of our water table is certain. The nuclear disaster at Fukushima was our second lesson about the horrible legacy and dangers of this technology. 
The waste itself takes hundreds of thousands of years to break down, and we can't even calculate the cost of that long term. Now, there was a professor called Mark Jacobson who who, um, produced a study from uh, Stanford University, and he said, based on our research, there is no technological or economic barrier to converting the entire world to clean, renewable energy sources. So why aren't renewables making an impact on the world stage? Well, I believe it's because The world's energy suppliers have a monopoly of ownership, production, and supply for nuclear and fossil fuels. And they'll continue converting those assets into revenue while we let them. In other words, while we keep buying their product. So, we turn to politics to save us. And the debate does seem genuine, you know, emotive arguments about the jobs and the economy. But where, to, where do federal and state politicians receive the majority of their contributions from? I believe if we connected the dots between the budgets of lobby groups and the resulting policies of major parties, then we'd have a clearer picture. But you don't hear about this in the media, really. Why is that? Well, I think that's because the centralisation of media ownership in this country means that there are no fair facts and our news of limited... Did you know that the mining industry receives $500 million in direct subsidies every year and $2 billion in tax concessions every year as well? In return for this, they're one of the top political donators. Now, when our Prime Minister boldly stated in his acceptance speech that Australia was once again open for business, I think we all cringed a little. The new federal government is looking to dismantle the Clean Energy Finance Corporation. That's supposedly rock-solid legislation for $10 billion worth of renewable investment. There's a plan to dredge 3 million cubic metres of the Great Barrier Reef to allow for more efficient transport of coal to what would be the biggest coal mine in Australia. UNESCO is even thinking of putting the Barrier Reef on its endangered list. It's crazy. So let's get real. If we're going to wait for the media and the political and the economic systems to change, then we'll be waiting a long time. Let's just take back our power, both personally and practically. Now, this all started for me when I built a camper trailer five years ago with a small standalone power system. Uh, That 300-watt system provides enough energy for lighting, refrigeration, pumping, and a whole bunch of other electronic devices that I have. Um, It's not hard to believe in a solar future when you've lived on such a small amount of power for so long. I lived on it for a year or more. And it spurred me to think about creating energy autonomy for myself in the future. So I changed industry as well. I now work for the solar industry. And it's really satisfying to visit people and give them systems that save them money, help the environment. But best of all, you own the asset, not a corporation. That's really important to me. Now, there are four steps to changing this paradigm. And it rips. The first concept we already know. Reducing energy is important for your bills, I I spend a lot of time in people's lounge rooms looking at their appliances and looking at their bills and and weighing up where it all goes. So I'll give you my top six tips for saving energy. Firstly, yes, so energy rating stickers on appliances when you're buying them brand new. Don't just look at the stars. Look at the uh, fine text as well. Um, Don't worry so much about turning everything off at the plug, at the wall. Look for appliances that have a circuit running so that they've got a display or they're waiting for a remote control to turn something on. And better yet, plug them into a smart power board. That can do it all automatically for you, so you don't have to think about it. Um, If you have an electric hot water system, you can turn down the thermostat. This got a buzz. Oh, look at that. So you can turn down the uh, temperature and save on energy waste. 
LED lights, they use a fraction of the energy of normal incandescent globes, and they're better than compact fluorescents. Plus, they last a very long time, and they don't have the toxic mercury vapor that incandescents do. Sorry, not incandescents, um, compact fluorescents. Pool pumps use a lot of energy, so make sure you set the timer to suit the season, and make sure you keep changing that regularly through the year. When you're looking at a new pool pump, there are variable speed motor models that use a third of the energy now. But lastly, and most importantly, air conditioning and heating are the most energy hungry devices in your home, so use them sparingly. But if you're looking at a new one, there are solar and heat exchange models available now. And lastly, also insulation and blocking gaps in your home so that you stop airflow from taking away that energy. Now, there is something that you can do right now that will have a profound effect on the situation. I want all of you to invest tens, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars in the renewables area. I can hear you all thinking, don't have that money, Jeff. Well, you do. Australians have over $3 trillion invested in superannuation. Now, a lot of that money goes to companies that invest in coal, oil, uranium, coal seam gas exploration. Have a look into genuine ethical superannuation funds. Their charters guarantee that they'll look after the environment and communities, and they'll invest vital money into research and development. But if you want to invest in your energy autonomy directly, then put it on your roof. A grid-connected system, solar system, pays for itself in around six years, and it's a simple way to get started and make a difference. These next ones, I get really excited when people talk to me about them. Hybrid systems utilize the same grid connect system, and you can add on to that grid connect system later, and it adds intelligence and batteries. So you end up storing the excess production during the day and using it at night time. I want you to visualize your home when you've invested in renewable technology. So you've reduced your power needs, you've invested in production on your roof, and you're storing that energy for later use. Also imagine an electric or plug in a hybrid electric vehicle in your garage, and you're starting to see the advanced energy future that is inevitable for us all on the planet. We each can help create a tipping point for the world's economic and political systems by investing in a responsible energy industry. We can change the paradigm by taking back our power. Thank you.